Hello folks and welcome back to the Bar Rain Paddock with Lawrence Barreto and Will Buxton uh, looking towards this weekend's Sakir Grand Prix Lawrence because there's an awful lot to talk about and an awful lot that's changed in just a few days. Um, it's an exciting weekend which was triggered by the fact that Lewis Hamilton is obviously not going to be here after testing positive for COVID-19. That means that there's a new face in a Mercedes, George Russell. We've got Jack Aitken in at Williams. We've also got Roman Grosjean who's not here after the accident. Um, so Pietro Fittipaldi's in there. So we've got three new faces on the grid. And without the world champion here, I think that really makes this weekend wide open. Yeah, it does. It also means there's a lot to play for. Uh, for George Russell, will he get one opportunity, potentially two, yeah. leading into Abu Dhabi to pr prove his worth, um, prove his talent and his potential to his potential future employers at Mercedes for Jack and Pietro. It's an opportunity for them uh, in F1 machinery as well. Yeah, to state their claim really, Jack and Pietro haven't obviously had an opportunity to show what they can do in a Formula One car on a Formula One weekend. Um, and, and rookies get so little testing these days, they just don't get an opportunity to show what they can do. So it's a huge weekend for all three of them really. Um, career defining weekend, you could say. A lot of people expecting George just to be able to jump in the car, get pole position and win the race, but it's not gonna be that simple. No, he's obviously got plenty of experience with Mercedes, six days in older cars before, but he's not driven this one and it's not as simple as jumping from a Williams into a Mercedes. He's going to have to learn all of the systems, all of the buttons, get used to, again to the team that he's used to working at through his junior programme. Um, it's going to take him some time, which I think like we were talking about earlier, Will, if he can get a chance in Abu Dhabi, that's really when we'll probably see what he can do. Yeah, that'll be the real test, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, that's one storyline. The other one is one which has been unfolding for weeks now, uh, months in fact. The battle for third in the Constructors' Championship is still hotly contested. Uh, and around this track, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fascinating weekend uh, in that battle for third. So without Lewis Hamilton here, that opens the field up massively because he's been so dominant of late. And that kind of means that anyone might win this weekend. And when I say anyone, you've got Red Bulls could win. Checo Perez was so good, wasn't he, yeah. here last weekend. The Renaults and the McLarens have shown that they are strong on their day. So if they can get their strategy right, if they can weave their way around this new circuit layout, there's no reason why we can't see some big swings in performance. Just as we did last weekend and with that late retirement for Perez, it suddenly swung towards McLaren. It could just as easily swing towards Renault, could just as easily swing towards Racing Point, which is two races left. And of course, uh, embedded in the centre of that fight for third in the constructors is this fight for fourth in the drivers. Yes. It's super close. Four points separate Daniel Ricciardo, Sergio Perez and who's the fifth one? Charles Leclerc. I don't know, <laughs> just, you know that maybe we always forget. That was close. Four points. And that's nothing when you compare, can consider that the podium position is available and you yeah. can get 15 points there. So the swing could be massive. Um, and at that point when Checo looked like he'd got that sign sealed and delivered and he lost that podium, like you said, if that happens again this weekend, it blows the whole thing wide open. And the thing that blows everything wide open this weekend is the fact that we will be racing on a circuit that Formula One has never raced on before. Not just like a Mugello or, or those other circuits that we raced at earlier this year that we hadn't been to uh, either for a long time or, or ever. Mm -hmm. But this is a track that is in part familiar and yet will be entirely new and not just in the layout and the proposition of that, a sub one minute lap, mm -hmm. massively high speed, full throttle for 75% of the lap. It could be the kind of Grand Prix we've not seen for a long, long time. It's a completely different proposition for all of the teams and drivers here. We both ran the track, yep. we did two laps, so we know how short it is, yeah. but also how long it could be when you do two. It's, it's, a completely, <laughs> right. it's a completely different layout, and it just means the demands on the cars and the teams and the relative strengths and weaknesses are gonna play out slightly differently than they did for the first Bahrain on the traditional circuit. So what will be key here this weekend is just how guys settle into things, get, get, kind of get down to business and learn the track and the new layout and how things are affected. It was really funny, I saw Esteban Ocon yesterday Today when I came back from the track run oh, yeah. and I'm obviously like a sweaty mess and he just said <laughs> oh, you've run the track I was like yeah I've run the track he said how is it is it undulating because I've driven it in the sim but I haven't walked it yet so is it you know it feels quite flat on the sim and I said actually there is quite a lot of un undulation there's quite a lot of, of movement you sort of you come down through four mm -hmm. and as you come down the hill as, 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 as you and I both know it, it drops down then it rises up back down again and then back up through that left, very sharp left, right over the crest. And then you're on that back run down to the start finish straight again. And it's gonna feel a little bit like a roller coaster because it will be so fast, those changes of direction. And they'll be up, down, up, down, and then around the back. That little bit at the top, 
I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be great. I think, and I think the high speed nature of it and the layout is exactly what F1 drivers yeah. like because they'll be going fast for most of the most of the track. There's hardly any really hard braking points apart from turn one. Uh, qualifying then is going to be really exciting. Q1. Can you imagine the traffic? Well, out trying there? to find the space. Uh, they'll probably be trafficked up through that that sort of wiggly bit and then absolutely launch down the back straight, I think, or maybe slowing down through that back straight as we saw even in Q1 uh, last weekend. It's gonna be an absolutely fascinating one. Of course, the teams don't have any data no. uh, on it at all. And they've had, you know, just a couple of days to, to change the cars. It shouldn't be too much of an issue for them, but we would imagine even with that sort of tight, tricky bit at the top, a very, very low downforce configuration, probably close to Monza spec uh, in terms of the wing configuration that we'll see here. Yes, exactly. And that probably will favour a team like Racing Point, perhaps, where they will probably excel more in those conditions. Uh, Renault, though, have shown gains in those areas, so yep. they could be in it as well. See, this is the thing, that there's so many teams that can really show well if they adapt very quickly to this layout. They've got the simulation data, like you said, but like you said, Ocon said, you go out there and it's completely different. I saw Alex Albon yesterday go for a track run. He went in the daytime, so fair play to him for going in that heat. I went in the daytime. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> 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 but it's a good lesson, isn't it, for them to learn the track. A load of guys have done it during the day and at night time. They just want to check it out. Yeah, totally. It's going to be a great weekend. As you said, so much to play for, so many storylines to unfold. George at Mercedes, the battle for third in the constructors, fourth in the drivers, and all on this really exciting, really different new circuit. Should be a great one. Uh, thanks as always, my friend. Uh, that's it, folks, from Lawrence, from me. Uh, we'll catch you over the weekend.